we know this is what's to be expected with Oklahoma weather. And then it hits your own community, and then it, it just kind of knocks you to your knees a little bit. The tornado outbreak, I mean, this is happening live yeah. right here in central Oklahoma. Major tornado damage in Cheyenne with search and rescue underway. Tornado emergency, let's just do this. For you folks in Hobart, you're not gonna see it. It's wrapped in rain. It's just east, tornado. just east of Highway 4. There power flash, tornado on the ground. We currently have six tornado warnings, so we're we're watching all of them. There's a tornado in the metro, on the ground, near the fairgrounds right now, David. Power lines are down on 10th Street. Tornado on the ground now, southeast Norman. It really ripped a path where it came through here, David. The damage is pretty intense. Developing tornado now just north of I-40, Brandon. I've just got a huge power flash, and I've got debris falling out of the sky. Three months in a row, back to back to back, uh, breaking records with tornadoes in Oklahoma. Ahead of the storm, presented by Scissor Tail Roofing and Construction. Hello, and welcome to this year's Ahead of the Storm special. Peak severe weather season is just ramping up here in Oklahoma, but we've already seen an historic outbreak of tornadoes in February, plus new tornado records in January and December. So what can you expect this spring? We're looking into that, plus a peek behind the scenes in our new weather center, and what it's like to go storm chasing with Jim Gardner in Bob Mills Sky News 9. All coming up, but first, Hannah Scholl on a storm chasing white knuckle ride. Well, it's a big severe weather day and I'm going to take you on a ride along with News 9 trackers Val and Amy Castor. I'm heading to their house right now. It's about 11 o'clock. So we're going to clean this stuff off. First things first, they have to prep the truck. You know, it's, it's a good thing to be able to see when you're driving. Um, is this your baby? Yeah, I guess you could say, well, I have six babies. <laughs> This might be my seventh, I don't know. <laughs> See what hail does right there? Oh, yeah. Picked up uh, almost ping pong ball size hail. We got the back of the seats full of waters. I got a jacket in there. I like to be prepared. While Val preps the truck, Amy is busy packing all the food, extra batteries, and equipment for going live. We have all of our backup cables. And don't forget the caffeine. That's for 3 o'clock, that's for 6 o'clock, <laughs> that's for 9 o'clock, and that's for 1 a.m. <laughs> nice. It's our camera. Here comes the most important part of our chase truck. <laughs> <laughs> Once everything's packed up and ready to go, we load up and get ready to head out. But first, a prayer for safe chasing. And Lord, we just pray for safety. Then we hit the road. Inside the truck, Amy mans the camera and the roof cam. There are monitors to show her what's going live on air. These are tracking east, southeast. They have a laptop to show the best roads for the chase, and Amy has her laptop out also looking at the latest data. On the way, we do a Facebook Live to keep people updated on the threats. So we're starting a Facebook Live, and uh, this is going to be just a heads up for uh, the potential today, and it's a big potential. We set up in Pampa, Texas, and wait for storms to fire, and once they do, it's go time. Power flash. We just had a power flash. Let's go to Valcaster. Go ahead, Val. Take it. You're hot. Go. We got 80, 80 mile an hour southeast winds right now. We can hear a wind roar. Let's go back to Valcaster. Wow. Look at that. No, another big power flash. It's a big tornado. Big. It looks like it's big. Okay. Hey, there's a tornado on the ground. Tornado on the ground. At the end of the day, we saw three tornadoes, drove over 600 miles, and were in the car for more than 12 hours. It is spinning down now. It looks like it's weakened some. The largest tornadoes that touched down that night statewide were three EF2s. It is moving, David. There's, there's the tornado. What do you got, 65? I had 65 to give folks plenty of heads okay. up. Okay. Our Lacey Swope is talking with an expert about what wind that strong can do to your home. Make sure that garage door is shut all the way. Okay. And uh, even also telling people on the inside of the house to shut all the interior doors. Rick Smith with the National Weather Service is one of those responsible for rating tornadoes and surveying damage that the storms leave behind. He walked us through the wind speeds it would take to damage your property. We want them off the top floors, get as low as you can, get as far inside as you can. In Oklahoma, we see a lot of damage to outbuildings and barns. It doesn't take much to do this, especially if it's an open structure. You don't have to have a tornado. If it's a barn with a big door and that door gets blown in, it could be 
60, 70, 75 mile an hour winds, just barely a severe thunderstorm that can do that. It takes a little bit more to uproot a tree. This can happen with just straight line winds. In general, if we're going to get a, a large tree uprooted, that's going to be about 90, 95 miles an hour. That's about the same wind speeds it takes to break windows and do minor structural damage. So we're getting up over 100 miles an hour uh, by that point, maybe close to 110 miles an hour. A mobile home is never a safe place to be in a severe thunderstorm, period. A single wide mobile home can be completely destroyed, like small pieces are all that's left with just 125 mile an hour winds. The recent tornado that hit Norman in February is a perfect example of EF2 damage. When we start seeing roofs removed from homes and that really significant damage, the almost total destruction of a house, that's when we're getting up into the 120, 125 mile an hour range. It's a big jump to get to the stage where we have a home that's collapsed. You look at a home and all the walls are down. That's about 150 miles an hour. We're getting up into the, definitely up into the higher end of the EF3, EF4 category then. So when you look at it, now there's there's pavement, and this was a well-built home. What's it going to take to just wipe it off the foundation? That's going to get us into the EF4 category, probably up over 160, 170 miles an hour. All the way up over 200 miles an hour, which would get us into the, the EF5 category. Now, those EF4, EF5 tornadoes are extremely rare, even for Oklahoma. Of course, they do happen, but if you take all the tornadoes dating back to 1950 that have happened across the Sooner State, the EF5 is the red sliver on the pie chart. That's only 0.1% of the tornadoes. EF4, 1.4%. The bulk of our tornadoes are EF1s and EF0s, which are on the weaker end, which you can survive in the center portion of your home, and that would do that exterior damage and that's the bulk of our tornadoes one thing to keep in mind tornadoes happen not only 365 days of the year at least they can they happen all hours of the day and night this chart is from the oklahoma city area and this shows you the daytime at the bottom and how many tornadoes we've had for that time period we've had a lot of tornadoes just in the oklahoma city metro area overnight early morning hours but of course the peak time frame is going to be early afternoon to about 4 5 6 p.m Oklahoma is not the only state that sees widespread tornadoes, but does that mean Tornado Alley is shifting? Andrew Adam dives in further to that. A really popular question I've seen raised over the last few years is, is Tornado Alley shifting from the Great Plains to the Southeast United States? Let's go see what the numbers have to say. Over the past three years, the numbers are pretty obvious. Alabama and Mississippi, both very much a hotbed for tornado activity, along with Texas. And you notice here in Oklahoma, and especially in Kansas, I would call it more of a tornado drought that's been going on. It's not so much that we aren't seeing tornadoes, it's that they are well below what we normally do. You go back the past decade, very much a hotbed of activity, as it always has been, is the Great Plains, Kansas, Oklahoma, and Texas, traditional tornado alley, and there's Dixie Alley. They've always seen tornadoes as well. So it's nothing new that the Southeast sees tornadoes. And talk about short-term memory, our state record that happened in 2019, 149 tornadoes in the past decade. We experienced, of course, the Moore, Oklahoma EF5 tornado in 2013. We also had our fewest tornadoes on record in 2014, but we still averaged 70 a year here in Oklahoma. And in the past 20 years, here's something that stands out. The top three states for total tornadoes, Texas, Kansas, and us right here in Oklahoma. Still ahead, we're taking you behind the scenes in the new Bob Mills Weather Center to show you how the new setup helps us keep you safe during storms.